Now, I remember playing Assassin's Creed 2 back on the Xbox 360, and at the time I was only nine years of age, but this game was the game for me. It was the game that made me fall in love with the lore of Assassin's Creed, and I know I am not the only one. We also got Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and a few years later we got Black Flag, which in my opinion was the peak of this entire franchise. The reputation hadn't been tarnished just yet, and we were actually getting great stories and time settings to jump straight into. Sadly though, it was only a year later that we began to fall down this slippery slope and eventually led to the travesty of a game known as Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I don't understand how we went from a franchise that cared so much about historical accuracy, or at least did to a degree that they removed crossbows from the first game to where we now are fighting Minotaurs within Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Norse gods within Valhalla. Well, actually, I do know why, which is exactly why this video exists. So let's discuss the rise and fall of Assassin's Creed. Like I said, I already know exactly why this happened, so I thought I would discuss it in this video. Going from the inception of the franchise and what completely destroyed the soul of the entire thing. You end up hearing me refer to different parts of Assassin's Creed as either AC 1.0, 1.5 or 2.0, which basically just refers to a few different things. You've got Gen 1 Assassin's Creed that is basically 1 through to 4, then Gen 1.5 is what I would class as Unity Syndicate, and then Rogue sits in that middle ground between both of them, but I'm going to put it more into the realm of maybe 1, but at the same time it came out at the same time as Unity. And then you have Gen 2 Assassin's Creed, which is Origins, Odyssey, and Valhalla. The downfall of Assassin's Creed is really a tale of awful and corrupted leadership, monetization through the roof, and tail chasing and greed. But just before we start talking about this story, if you enjoy high effort content like this video, video essays as well, and general gaming content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support any further, we do also have the join button down below. There's going to be more content coming out there in the future. For me to begin explaining all of this, I have to invite you into a time machine and bring you back to 2007, where I was only five years old. So overall, I was pretty useless when it comes to this segment. So we end up going and referring to Wikipedia. Ubisoft wanted to release a game that wasn't focused around the Prince of Persia franchise, but still incorporated the gameplay that they had been working on in the past, and after learning about the Order of Assassins, they'd end up sparking up the idea to eventually lead to the first ever Assassin's Creed game, releasing on the 14th of November for the most part to good reviews. This sparked Ubisoft to greenlight one of my favourite franchises in the whole of gaming, and one that sent waves through the gaming world and cemented this franchise forever. Assassin's Creed 2 released on the 17th of November 2009, which was one of three games in this entire franchise to have a two year gap between releases. But this game is one that made this franchise truly what it is today. A lot of people try and give all of the credit to AC1, but if you actually look at this franchise overall, it would really be nothing without the character of Ezio. During the release of Assassin's Creed 2, they end up coming up with the concept of Brotherhood, which Ubisoft didn't actually class as Assassin's Creed 3, they more put it towards the idea of being a 2.5. The game is a lot bigger in pretty much every single sense of the idea, and everything ended up going perfectly for this game for the most part, and even they fixed the colour correction, so well done to Ubisoft, they actually did something right. And because of the release of the smash hit of AC2, they did start getting some steam behind them, and eventually did release AC Brotherhood, which everyone pretty much across the board loved this game. And you might have thought, after releasing two games, basically back to back, they might have decided to take a little bit of time off and slow down slightly. Kind of. They released AC Revelations on the 15th of November 2011. Which I have to say, looking back at November 2011, that was an insane month for games. Back then you had Skyrim, AC Brotherhood, Modern Warfare 3 and Arkham City. They're literally a few games that came out at the beginning half of November. It's insane to think how many like great games you had to play just right after school at that point, just insane. Anyways, Revelations releases and overall people didn't necessarily care too much about it, mainly for two reasons. People started to become hyped for AC3, but also Ezio was a character that sure everyone loved, but people started to think was more of a crutch that was keeping Assassin's Creed up. Well a year later this was actually tested and to many people's surprise, it was kind of true. Now before you start coming at me in the comments talking about how Ezio was the character keeping the game up and Alive in 3 wasn't that good of a game, I want you to take a breather for a second, and remember what we actually look back on fondly as a great game now. Back in 2012, 
people did not actually like that much. People were ripping into this game so heavily for having a boring protagonist, the open world being extremely dull, the story being slow, and the only redeeming factor being Haytham Kenway. Which to be fair, are all understandable criticisms of this game. We can definitely look back now and rejoice at the old ways of AC, but the people who loved the first, second, and second game sequels, for the most part, didn't actually enjoy 3 on launch. However, one thing that I'll add in here that I do think is a really good thing just to mention is that YouTube at the time was starting to take off even more, and subsequently that meant that anyone outside of gaming journalists were able to have a say in anything if a game was good or bad, which meant that we could end up starting to entertain this idea of more of a hypercritical thinking about many different things, anyone having an opinion, and effectively meaning that if someone doesn't like something, they can congregate their entire audience around that idea. But what I will say as a redeeming factor to Assassin's Creed 3 is that it is an actually like decent game if you go back and play it listen to the story listen to the conversations between characters and overall like it's not that bad it's not as bad as people back then were making out when i played it when i was a kid i enjoyed it personally but this is going off of what the public reception was like however in the background ever since revelations ubisoft montreal gave a little team a little job which was effectively to start working on the future of this franchise and half a year into the release of the third installment we ended up getting a cinematic trailer that would drop and honestly change the whole of just the Assassin's Creed landscape forever. Assassin's Creed Black Flag had just been announced, a game where you play as a pirate in the West Indies, setting sail and assassinating targets. This game in my mind is what newer titles want to try and do, which is tell a story that has an Assassin Templar conflict as more of a morality question for the main character and not just the full story going all the way through it, such as, you know, AC1, 2, Brotherhood, Revelations, and 3. However, none of them have been able to do this since Black Flag, as the story of this game doesn't centre around the conflict between the two groups, but more the pirate life, and the conflict invading into the story of the pirates. Now this game is what a lot of people would class as the best Assassin's Creed title, or just at least the last good one, as the ship is going to get very rocky from here on out. But before I move on to Unity, I did want to mention this, that this game became the best selling Assassin's Creed title in the whole franchise, as we're still yet to have any numbers actually confirmed by Ubisoft of how many people actually bought the game of Valhalla, which honestly, if they haven't told us, and they're not bragging about it, it probably wasn't as many as some people would hope for. Black Flag though also gave us Edward Kenway, and finishing off the Kenway saga, kind of. It did in a sense for the playable characters I guess, however to the overall story it didn't, until the release of Unity the following year. We now enter into Gen 1.5 of Assassin's Creed. We're now in 2014, AC Rogue and Unity are both coming out in the latter half of the year. With one meaning to be for the good old, old gen players that don't have a PS4 or Xbox One just yet, or so Ubisoft claimed that's why they were doing it. However, we all know the true reason why Rogue was released. But also, Unity was the game that was meant to be fully revamping this franchise from head to toe. We got a whole new looking game graphically, new combat, new parkour, and a character that was told to be rivaling Ezio. Everything was looking good for Ubisoft this year, and if you want to see a full video essay discussing how this year was actually kind of like the dramatic fall of Ubisoft and how this year was set up to be just an amazing year for them, how they completely blew it, check out the video I've got called Ubisoft Lost Souls. This video is what I would class as like the best all round uh, video talking about how 2014 is literally the make or break year that kind of changed Ubisoft forever. Now, this is where we truly enter what I would class as Assassin's Creed 1.5. I call it AC 1.5 for a reason, and this is because of what I mentioned earlier. As this game is in a way the Gen 2 of Assassin's Creed, but it still kept a lot of the similarities to the Elders of this franchise. However, it did improve on most of them, and made massive strides across the board. We all know how the gameplay is of these games, from the combat and the amazing looking parkour. There is fundamentally a reason that we still see videos of the parkour of Unity especially, and the graphics of the game to this day. It was truly phenomenal. However, I can't fully praise this game as we all know exactly what happened next. Now outside of this, the game did end up adding a leveling system, which in a way was actually a step away from the franchise, and the reason why I end up bringing this up is because it's one of the things that does actually stray away from what is actually this franchise, and kind of starts the moving blocks 
towards what we got later on with things like the RPG trends. But this game started this trend, and the reason this is such a big deal is that this started the shift from story, time setting and location being the key pillars, to then adding side content and a levelling system, which needs to work alongside the rest of the game. Which sounds fine, and actually I do overall quite enjoy the system within Unity, and I think it works well. However, if you try and approach Unity in the same way that you would have approached the previous games, you'll end up following a story that eventually you start to realise that if you do not touch on much of the side content in this game, later on you're going to end up getting level capped, or at least very much penalised for not doing the side content. Which overall, I think some people would say, honestly, what's wrong with doing side content? And I do agree with you. People would love doing side content as long as it was good, but these games and this franchise at large has never been good at making good side content. The story, character, and world has always been what upholds these games. And for the first time, because they ended up adding a levelling system, we end up being forced to indulge into the side content, which wasn't awful, but what it ended up doing was meaning that by the time you hit sequence 9, there was a little bit of a levelling issue. So if you didn't do any of the side content, or a minimal amount of it, you'd end up getting penalised from playing the main story. But this game started the descent into what is the fool of this franchise. This is yet another game within this franchise that is looked back at fondly, but we all are clouded by this romanticised version of what the old titles represented. This game as a whole is good to go back and play, especially now, but overall, we can't say that this game was great. It's decent, but it was extremely broken, and to this day, in some places, it is broken. The story falls short by the last hurdle, and the levelling system added a way to force players into doing content that typically they wouldn't have been doing in the prior titles. But we can't forget about the most unknown game in this franchise, Rogue. This was the last game to have the old school style of gameplay, but this game was in my opinion the most underrated concept that they could have used ever and they just completely flopped it with this game. And the concept itself is literally just playing from the Templar perspective, but what I mean by this is a flop is for many different reasons about the gameplay, like I've mentioned in this video about other videos, I made an entire video essay about this game. Overall this game is probably the biggest scummiest move Ubisoft have ever done to date. I would say that this game and the release of this game and the pricing of this game is worse than what they have done with anything else. Coming up to launch, this game was already getting the reputation of just being a black flag clone that's generally an okay thing to say, but it isn't really amazing to have a game classed as a clone. But that wasn't actually the issue. The issue was that this game was six hours long of an AC story, a complete collector-thon, and all of this was releasing at £50 on release. So yeah, let, let's just say that they charged people on last gen consoles the same amount of money that they were charging people on next gen consoles for a game that is arguably way better, no matter what, like even if you think about the bugs of Unity, it doesn't matter. Rogue was fundamentally so much worse off as a game as a whole than Unity, but they cost the same amount of money on launch. It's just insane. But what I will mention right now is that you can buy both of these games for like £10 combined, which is actually a great uh, deal, if I'm being honest. I think it's, you know, depreciated assets overall, but uh, yeah, definitely buy these. Like, £10 is actually a great deal to play through Unity and Rogue, in my opinion. Like, a six-hour story here, and then like a 12 and a half, 15 hour, I think, for Unity, from my remembering of if you just force your way through the story. But all around, you are actually playing a good game. However, I think the best way of describing AC 1.5 and the era of these games is that they have this consistent issue with quality control. Next on the way downhill is Syndicate, which might be one of the worst in this entire franchise for a few different reasons, but overall let's just say that this game decided what it would do is take everything that Unity did, dumb it all down, but instead they would lower the bugs at least. So on paper, it was a good game, in contrast of, you know, the prior game's mechanical issues, but outside of that, this game was bland, boring, and gave us nothing outside of a grappling hook for reasons only known to Batman. Now, the biggest issue facing the franchise of Assassin's Creed was the struggle with its reputation. Every game felt the same, and sadly, not enough change had happened between Black Flag and Unity to justify a happy medium, which also meant that Syndicate was just being looked at as yet another annual release, and nothing more than an item to be churned out for profit. This is what I would generally argue as the truest low point of this franchise, this was the make or break moment, to be honest, for everything upcoming about the future of this entire thing. If the next game wasn't unique, with a great world to explore, 
and a character to enjoy, then simply Ubisoft would have to throw in the towel and accept that their biggest cash cow was completely burnt out. The year after Syndicate's release was very bleak when it came to content, but the hype was really starting to stir as people started to question what was actually going to happen moving forward. Where were the games going to be set and what was going to happen in the next game in particular? Maybe we would be going to Japan, ancient Egypt, or back to the Italian Renaissance. Well, the wait was finally over, and what we ended up getting was a glimpse of Assassin's Creed Origins. However, before we actually talk about this game in particular, we need to talk about the game that truly changed the landscape of gaming forever and the way people talk about and compare games, which was the release of The Witcher 3. I know this is a video talking about the rise and fall of Assassin's Creed and I'm now bringing up The Witcher 3, but it is important. This game had a massive influence across the board on many different franchises and more in particular, what you saw next with the Assassin's Creed franchise. When this game came out, it wasn't long before people started calling it one of the best games ever made, and it won Game of the Decade. Due to this company's thoughts of what they actually think people loved The Witcher 3 for, which was, you know, the open world fantasy elements at face value is true, but ignoring all of the amount of layers that actually made The Witcher 3 what it was. The Witcher 3 is an amazing game, not just because of its fantasy open world. It had an amazing looking world, a combat system that was easy to understand but had layers to it, that added a level of nuance that some players could at least grip their teeth into. It has one of the best cities ever made within games, the side quests are top notch, the 40 second rule and even simple stuff from having an amazing in-game game known as Gwent. But effectively, this game came out and a load of companies wanted to try and recreate the success of it, but probably the main company who really wanted to drive this home was Ubisoft. So they started their plans, which I'll discuss all three games in a moment. But I find the idea that Origins was a stepping stone for Odyssey actually a take that isn't really that valid anymore when you look at the overarching theme of what happened. I think both games were nothing more than basically stepstones between each other for what they wanted to eventually release, which was Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Both games have massive jumps between them and eventually becomes Assassin's Creed Valhalla as the end goal. And it ended up going so far that they're now having to look at releasing a game to try and win back their core fanbase. So let's discuss the first step into the true fall of this franchise that I would actually say was the beginning little bit of hope that this franchise had left, but soon fell completely off the rails. We now enter into Assassin's Creed 2.0. Assassin's Creed Origins, this game released on the 27th of October and for the first time in the history of this franchise, they actually chose to take a year off to supposedly go back to the drawing board. Obviously I mentioned earlier that there was a year between AC 1 and 2, but that doesn't really count because it was just concepts by then. This is just talking about the annual releases. All of it ended up leading up to a game which was honestly quite amazing. Everyone was getting really hyped for the next release of this franchise and it felt like the old school Assassin's Creed days leading up between let's say AC 3 and 4 and even into Unity. But instead we were having fun to be a part of this idea of what could be the future of this entire franchise. And once we got the idea that they were going to Egypt, we knew that this game would actually be decent as they chose to listen to their fans for one of the first times in ages and go to a location they desired. Everything was actually looking up and if I'm honest, it didn't disappoint. Now people do love to hate this game ever since the release of Valhalla, as people started to look at Origins as in a way the perpetrator for what we ended up getting with Valhalla, which honestly I, I do have to completely disagree with. I'm going to have a full video essay in a month's time roughly explaining my overall thoughts on why I think Origins is in fact a good game and a good entry to the Assassin's Creed franchise. To give you an overall summary of what I'm going to talk about in that video roughly, I think we need to go back to what I mentioned earlier, which was that clearly Valhalla was the vision Ubisoft had and wanted. They wanted to recreate a world close to The Witcher. They wanted the gritty European style of a game, the way people speak and attempting to make a stoic character that has voice lines that made sense. But people overlook that Valhalla was already in the frame or even Odyssey and instead jump to the idea that Origins was the beginning of the RPG-ness of what you got with this entire franchise. That's a quick rundown as I'm not going to explain my full thoughts on it, I want to save that for the video. But yeah, let, that's just my mini run over, so let's actually talk about this game's overall effects to the Assassin's Creed franchise in the public's light. Which at the time was actually overall received very well as people wanted to see this from Ubisoft. They were happy to see that they were listening to their fans. 
They wanted a story about a game in Egypt without following the basics of the AC game formula, which as mentioned earlier, does become a little bit boring for the core fan base. However, Origins actually performed decently well in regards to a lot of the things that were being put towards it. Yes, they dumbed down many of the different elements of this franchise, but outside of that, they actually gave the fans kind of what they wanted. We got a story with the main character that wasn't annoying, you understood his narrative, and the villains were actually somewhat interesting and mysterious at times especially, which for the most part is really hard to pull off in games by themselves, let alone Ubisoft's attempts within Assassin's Creed. Now this meant that overall people did quite love this game, especially at launch, and nowadays you see two types of videos online talking about this game. One will either talk about how they dislike this game so much because, you know, for some reason it's at fault for the RPG side of things. I, I just think people who think that don't take into account that, you know, companies do think a lot of these things through way before they release the first lot. It's not something that's just, you know, oh yes, we finished Origins, what do we do now? It, that's not what happens. Or you have the other type of people who talk about how they used to hate Origins on release, and after going back and revisiting it, they realise that they were actually wrong. The game all round is decent and is actually a great Assassin's Creed game, a great addition to the franchise, and might be, for the first time in ages, an actual Assassin's Creed game. I would argue, to be honest, that this game is the closest to an Assassin's Creed title that you got since Unity, and honestly, before that, Revelations. As yes, 3 and 4 are AC titles and so on, but... I think 3 starts to stray in terms of like general like how much people will like overall enjoy certain parts. If you're an AC Lore fan like me, you're going to love Assassin's Creed 3, but all round as a game as well incorporated, it wasn't that great. Then you have Black Flag that I would say is, it is an Assassin's Creed game, has all the conflicts going on, is an amazing game, but a lot of people love that game purely because it doesn't focus on the Assassin's Creed narrative. And then you have Unity, which is the closest game after the release of Revelations that focuses solely on this assassin truly in the conflict. From a story perspective as well, I think this game really worked to truly rebirth what they wanted to do in the right way by telling the story of what is the origins of the Creed. So for the first time in four years, it's seeming that they might actually have a light at the end of the tunnel for this franchise. But in reality, it was a light but not a real one. It's like when you're getting light through your window screen in your car, or you know, when you're driving on a road and there is light blaring off of the rainy, watery road. That is what this was. It was blinding you to what was to come down later on which was Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now, if I'm honest, I don't really have much to say about this game. I think that outside of AC Unity, it might be one of the most outspoken and most diverse on opinions of games within this entire franchise. And what I mean by this is that it's definitely not an Assassin's Creed game. I think we can all say that 100% for certainty. Especially in the sense of a storytelling perspective about the Assassin's Creed, you know, the main overarching theme of the franchise. But a lot of people who weren't interested in the franchise came to this game and actually really enjoyed it. And effectively, this game was in a way trying to bring fans in who didn't like Assassin's Creed to then come and join the Assassin's Creed franchise. It was a very weird choice to do. They decided to alienate their main fan base in the hopes of gaining a new one. Which is why overall though, I do want to go revisit this game without playing it through the lens of playing it as an Assassin's Creed player, but playing it as an open world RPG perspective. As I've had many friends who don't enjoy Assassin's Creed go and play this game and tell me that they genuinely actually enjoy it for the most part. However, this game definitely didn't land well with the people on the YouTube space. One of the most prominent figures at the time towards Assassin's Creed made a video that many of you would have seen titled AC Odyssey Broke Me, which I think got a lot of good reactions, mainly because it was a game that in a way was simply just a massive middle finger to the core fan base. However, I've seen many different people's opinions online about this game, and I've spoken to friends as I mentioned. It's such a diverse game when it comes to if people like it or don't like it, it's actually kind of insane to see. Personally, I just got bored of the game more than anything. I didn't think it was that great, but all round, like I said, I'm gonna be giving it another shot at some point this year, hopefully, and I'll actually give a better video one day and an overall thesis on the game as a whole. I don't have much to say outside of Odyssey was definitely not an Assassin's Creed game, is an okay game at times. If you don't like Assassin's Creed, you're going to enjoy it, but this was a nail almost in the coffin of this franchise, but definitely wasn't hammered in until the next game's release. So let's talk about, you know, that one.
Now though, again, before we talk about this game, this is something that seems to be a theme here, that before we talk about a game, we end up having to talk about another thing. So before we talk about this game, I think we need to talk about what happens before the release of this game, and more in particular, the promotion around this game. This game was promoted to, in a way, reunite this fan base, to bring in the ones who loved Odyssey and bring in the ones who loved this franchise. The gameplay that we were shown looked fairly interesting, however, on recollection, was a massive, scummy, diverse tactic to use. I've spoken about this many times in different videos, but give you a quick rundown. This game was sold on the entire premise of it was going to be a Viking experience that went back to the roots of the franchise, giving us things like, you know, following an assassin, and also social stealth, social kills, and all round was meant to feel more like an Assassin's Creed game than what you got with Odyssey, and even with Origins. However, the gameplay that creators were shown and allowed to play was really hyper-selected, as in extremely hyper-selected, that it made the game look like it was what it was being sold as. However, once you actually played the game, you realised that reality was setting in very quickly. This game was also not meant to have XP boosters. However, all of this was literally just an entire cloud around this entire game to just get people to buy in. But what ended up happening is on the 10th of November, alongside the releases of the new gen consoles to join in the hype within that, the new consoles were released with this game in particular, and this was basically pushed everywhere. And this is another game that in my mind was a massive and even bigger middle finger to the franchise core fan base than Odyssey was. Overall, it wasn't even good for the people who loved Odyssey either. Don't get me wrong, I'll admit that this game looks amazing and it is actually an enjoyable game for maybe the first 30 hours or so. But when you're playing a game, the last thing you want to be thinking is, surely I'm near the end. Not just that, but the feeling is if you're just being exhausted when playing it. It got to points where I was just sat there and after an hour of playing I was like, oh I'm just done, I don't want to play anymore. It, it was ridiculous. This is what Valhalla did to me in particular and many others out there, from people that you see in the YouTube space, all the way through to probably your friends who have played it. It is what I would class as what happens when people don't think with their wallets and let companies like Ubisoft run rampant with whatever they see fit. It's also what happens when you have one family running a company with no desire to make a game truly for their fans. I would say though that this game is truly why this video exists. The fall of Assassin's Creed is truly defined by this game. The three key areas is the story of this game, the lack of side content and the XP boosters. All of it links together with this overarching issue that most people have with this game, which is the length. Now this is something that has affected many games out there, but Valhalla is the epitome of believing length equals quality. I think one of the first areas to discuss about this game is going to be the plot, and it definitely drifts away from the standard Assassin's Creed practices, however, you know, it wasn't anywhere near as much as Odyssey, so at least it wins in that department. You know, like another win for this game is that they at least had assassins in this game, outside of a DLC, you know, that there's at least that as well. But outside of this, the game looks great, but deep down, it is ugly. The plot of this story is extremely boring, and going into different areas of the map to gain allies is cool for like the first three areas, but after that it becomes massively tedious and boring. The game's main story seems to have this massive issue with bloat. What I mean by this is that you have areas within this story that just seems like good side quests, but for some reason the main story doesn't seem to be fitting in with this entire overarching theme. Like, you know, how are certain areas of this game actually involved in the plot that's moving this game forward? It doesn't make sense in many different places on this map. This is something that I've noticed within games that annoys me more and more these days. However, this seems to be, like, like I said earlier, the epitome of just believing that length equals quality. They decided to pump up the numbers for basically the storyline and trying to make it out to be like this amazing epic story when in reality all they did was they made a bloated story that people felt exhausted playing and then they made a world that had awful side content. Which to me, if they had actually, you know, done the normal thing and just, you know, focused the story on having only the story content in there and taking out the areas that felt like good side content, they would have had a game that would have actually been somewhat decent and definitely wouldn't be ripped apart as much. However, that wasn't the only controversy around this game. You also had the fact that the XP boosters, you know, were added in a month after launch just for the sake of extra money when they said that they were never going to be adding them to this game at all. They added these in a month after launch after all of the reviews had come out and all of the good press for not adding XP boosters in, in the first place. Like, 
This is just the definition of sleeky salesman, which to me isn't something that Ubisoft should be overly proud of, but that's just me. I think overall this game just has scummy vibes all around it. This game to me can be summed up pretty easily with they overpromised and extremely underdelivered to their core fan base, and then an overall mediocre game was made that not even the average person could enjoy purely because of its length. Now what I'll mention is something that I think some people will try and bring up, which is surely Valhalla wasn't the fool of this franchise, as it's the most profitable game in the franchise. The fool isn't real, clearly. Yes, as, as mentioned, it's made the most money out of any game in this franchise, that is true. However, that doesn't necessarily mean the game sold well. It's got 20 million players, but again, that doesn't mean 20 million copies were sold. These are very different numbers that you need to be taking into consideration. Not only do you have, you know, the fact that people can game share things, you've then got the fact that it's on things like PlayStation Plus and all these different stuff. Like, across the board, that also doesn't include people who have pirated the game. Let's just put that out there. Literally, the 20 million players is just anyone out there who could play it. Ubisoft themselves have never, not even in their financial documents, gone over how many copies of Valhalla has ever been sold. So if they were actually proud about this, like they have done in the past when a game sells really well, why are they not bragging about it? It seems a little bit questionable. So to me, this was the final nail that actually got struck into the coffin. However, because of, I would say, origins, if I'm honest, there is still this glimmer of hope. But before we talk about Mirage, I think we need to bring up what has actually been destroying this franchise from within, and is truly the downfall of a lot of this. And for many people out there who don't know much about Ubisoft, or know very little overall, but they care about Assassin's Creed, there is a family who run Ubisoft. Uh, the Guimau family, that is how it's pronounced, even though I'm terrible with my pronunciations. But basically, this family are the definition of nepotism through and through. Which basically just means that they are a publicly owned company for 80% of their value. Value. They control 5% of the shareholders of this entire company. They still to this day haven't got rid of the guy whose name I can't pronounce, I'll just show it on screen now, who's the CEO of this company. But the reason isn't because, you know, he's so good at his job that he shouldn't be gotten rid of, but simply that his family are so embedded into this company that it is almost impossible to remove the stranglehold they have over this company. Not only are the Guimau family really interested in milking this franchise completely dry, their primary shareholders are aren't much different. Tencent own the other 15% of the company that I didn't mention. Now, if I'm honest, I do think they are looking to just get a buyout very soon and just get out of the entire thing. If, if I was them anyway, that's what I would do. Their stocks are down, Ubisoft are looking in the bin, you know, the 20 million dollars worth of projects that they've had to cancel, all these different things. It's all adding up to be a very big issue for Ubisoft, in my opinion. However, what all of this does, you know, from the fact that you've got this family who have a stranglehold over this company, you have Tencent who are a massively, you know, monetization rich company. And then also them having to cancel $20 million worth of projects because they didn't have the viable assets to do so. All this means is that the future of the franchises that Ubisoft hold in high regard, so Far Cry and more in particular for this video, Assassin's Creed, have the possibility to be doomed to what Ubisoft have been doing for the last few years, which is major monetization that ends in players being frustrated with the games they get. But I do want to leave this video off in a bit more of a brighter note and discuss the possible rise from the ashes that Assassin's Creed could have as a whole. And I think this will start with Assassin's Creed Mirage. The future of this franchise seems to be more of what we've been getting. So it does seem that Ubisoft are trying to plan a way to appeal to both sides of their core fan base, the one they built with Odyssey, and trying to just get new players in the door. Which overall, from what rumours have basically been looking at, it seems that Mirage might be a game that you'd be getting, let's say like a core fan base Assassin's Creed game for every two RPG Assassin's Creed titles. Which honestly, I'm not anti that idea, but I do fear that the whole idea is nothing more than trying to please everyone so that you end up pleasing absolutely no one. There is a fear of that. But this is something that we might end up dealing with often during this phase of Ubisoft. However, what I do want to say is that Mirage, if it's anything like what they're mentioning, 
and hopefully it is, this basically means that Ubisoft are being a lot more transparent about the release of their games. As one of the biggest issues that I had with the release of Valhalla was nothing more really than the marketing and overall the bloated game, but the game was marketed in a completely misleading manner. And some people do try to defend this and say that you were basically hyper selecting things and it wasn't true. It was. Just look back to all of the gameplay that like all of the big YouTubers were given, who really are the ones talking to the core fan base of Assassin's Creed. It was hyper selected. It is ridiculous. It was very, very chosen to try and make people believe that they were going back to the roots of the franchise and to be sold on this idea. So if moving forward, they are being more honest. As I mentioned, Mirage is kind of the game that's putting that all onto its shoulders effectively. If it fulfills the promises that have been made so far about what this game is meant to be, then we can kind of take everything else that they've mentioned for the most part as generally accurate with what the future of this franchise has in store. I want to see Mirage be amazing and bring a lot of us back to this franchise, but I think I am justifiable hesitant like many of you. I just don't want this game to go down in the history books of Ubisoft just completely screwing everyone again, but we never know really. However, things I do think will impact Mirage in the future of this franchise is going to be things like the fact that they've had to scrap $200 million worth of stuff. All of these things will have an impact. Truly, the rise and fall of Assassin's Creed comes down to a concoction of different things. The first is blind faith that your core fan base will keep playing the franchise that isn't giving them any form of value to them. The second is this desire to recreate success of prior games and not understanding the actual reason as to why games like The Witcher 3, Assassin's Creed 2 or even Black Flag became successful in the first place. And the third is greed. It is something that is bleeding more and more into games across the board, but Ubisoft are definitely the company that have somehow been able to take over this conversation of gaming greed, and EA has been able to slip into the shadows because Ubisoft have been so bad recently. But all three of these things are all what have hindered Ubisoft, and it's all why this video ended up getting made of why the fall of Assassin's Creed happened. The first slip into this decay was Unity. It was Ubisoft's attempt to try and recreate the success of AC2 and even 4, with characters and stories being played out, but allowing the greed to take over and push out a game too early meant that you started this fall from grace. The second was Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which was giving the middle finger up to the core fanbase and trying to recreate some of the success that The Witcher 3 saw. And the third was Valhalla, which had all three issues blended in together. It was completely misleaded in terms of its promoting, it played out poorly and doubled down on the issues that plagued the franchise prior. I love this franchise and I genuinely do. I feel like I've discussed this at length about different games and how this is like one of those franchises that will always have a soft spot for me as it's the one I grew up playing the most. If I went back and played other games, it was the ones that I was always replaying. However, I want to see the future of this be good and it's just a part of me that ends up being worried that we won't get what we're actually after. I will be covering Mirage when it does come out, give you my basically day one review, uh, my week after if you should play it review sort of thing, and then an actual video essay later on in the year. Uh, but yeah, overall, the state of Assassin's Creed as a franchise doesn't look good. I don't think it's overly something that you could say that people should be hopeful for. However, I hope that it is something that is actually decent with Mirage, that can actually start making these games decent again and bring forth the people who actually love this franchise. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I haven't done a video like this you know, in a, ever, really, a Rise and Fall video, but I did try my best to pretty much consolidate all the information and give you an overall perspective. So yeah, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, do subscribe for more content on this channel, and I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one.